Looks like there's a little frog right here. Might be hard to tell, but yeah, no, first cast in this spot, I uh, hooked a nice cutthroat, didn't have my camera out. And then the second cast, I got another bite. And then right when I turned my camera on, it's been nothing since. I know there's gotta be more than two in here. Oh cool, the thing's still on. Well, there's fish number two. It's a little bit smaller than the first one, but this is cool because this is the first fish ever caught on this GoPro. And wow, look at that. That is a beautiful fish. Red gills, that's how you know it's a cutthroat. But just look at that coloring on the side. Almost looks like a hybrid between a rainbow and a cutthroat with those pink colors. There he goes. Swimming back upstream to where he came. See if we can get a couple more, and then if not, then we're probably going to move down farther. This river comes out of a lake which is where i first tried fishing it's almost impossible to fish but this lake goes into this creek or whatever this is and this creek goes into the ocean i moved up just a little ways hopefully the audio on this camera i'm sure is significantly better than my last hopefully if it's even a little bit better that'll be awesome if not i can always get the media mod in the future or whatever i want to do Nice thing, one of probably the best things and reason why I really upgraded, one of the biggest reasons is because of the battery life. This camera lasts up to 38% more with the Enduro batteries than with the regular batteries from my 7. So it goes from lasting about 45 to 50 minutes to about supposedly two hours, which is crazy for these little action cameras to be able to put up with that for two hours. After this cast, I'm probably gonna head downstream a ways. Still probably have a little bit of ground to cover before we hit the ocean. And uh, I've got really a couple hours. I may not end up going anywhere else. I started, first off, I started at this one lake. This lake, I fished there. It was real small. I fished there, you know, only like five, 10 casts pretty much. And then decided that there was probably little to no fish in there because they hadn't stocked it in a while. Turns out they're gonna stock it in about a week, but yeah, nice. But after we fished that spot, we came down here and tried to fish this lake, which I've seen for years, always wanted to fish, but never have gotten to. And it was really almost impossible to, to get to. So I followed this stream down here, which had a bunch of pokey plants. Luckily I'm wearing pants, so I didn't scratch my legs too much, but below the lake is this creek where we are now at. It's spot number three, the first spot we've actually caught fish. There's another one. I'm sure they're just loaded in here. Another small one. There he goes. It's kind of cool when they release themselves because you don't have to touch them. And when you touch a fish, it burns their skin because your hands are dry. And so that was kind of cool. Smallest one of the day though, but fish number three. Number three for four. I'm feeling one right here. Uh-oh, I might lose this. All right, so I tied a new different Panther Martin on because I lost the old one. Unfortunately, I think that was my only gold one, but now we're fishing with a yellow one. Hopefully it has similar results. I'm guessing these fish barely get fished for, if ever. So could possibly be that they're just super hungry and will bite anything flashy. Oh, there we go. I saw him go for it and then, yeah, these fish are lively. Look at that, another wild cutthroat. I believe that makes us four for five. Man, just, wow, look at these fins though. That's If the color is so much better on here, you'll see that, I mean, that's just crazy. Probably smallest one of the day, but still fish. All right, after this cast, I'm gonna move down. It actually looks like this part of the river gets wider and shallower, but still bet you it's loaded with fish. It's an absolutely perfect day for the middle of March, and I decided it might be a good idea to go check out some of the coastal lakes, and little did I know I'd end up fishing a river and actually catching trout, native trout in the middle of winter, or the end of winter. It's crazy. Don't really get very many opportunities like this. Don't really know about a whole lot of spots like this where you can catch, you know, natives just in a hidden stream, hidden coastal river, whatever you want to call it, so. It's really cool that we've already caught ourselves like four or five. It's still a ways of river to go. Not sure if I'm really gonna fish the whole river because I may not have time and it also may not all be accessible, but I'm fishing what I can and so far yielding some pretty good results. Though there may not be as many fish in this stretch of the river as the last one. Either that or my uh, gold lure was slightly better. 
So with that, I'm gonna keep moving down. All right, so as you can see, the ocean is right there. So we didn't really have that much more river to cover because most of this is really shallow. I'd be surprised if there's any fish in here, but I'm gonna try. What I'm probably gonna do is walk down until it comes out to the ocean. I don't think there's uh, too much area I can actually cover. That's where we came from right up there around that corner. It's a lot deeper. And it's still not deep, but it's probably double the depth of this. I'm gonna walk down there, leave my stuff right here and come back for it. Cause I got two bags, two poles and a thing of worms. It's a lot to carry around. Didn't think I'd be walking this much and hiking this much and tearing up my legs this much. There's like these cactus like plants everywhere and I had to trudge through those to get down here. So like I said, my legs would be a lot more torn up if not for these pants. Hopefully they're not torn up too badly. It's so cool to go from fishing a lake to fishing a creek or a river to fishing the ocean. Not that we're going to fish the ocean, but just the fact that all these are connected within, you know, half mile of the road. Something you rarely ever see. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a bit more harder to access than I figured. But that's kind of been my day is going through bushes. So what's a few more, I guess. Hopefully this log is stable, then I can cross. We should be through the thick of it. All right, so we've come up over the hill that we were just on. Yeah, this is this is it right here. Little sandbar, the wall on the other side. It's not super deep over there. Take a few casts and then probably call this place it. But man, look at this outlook right here. I've never seen this before. So I had to walk a long ways to get down here, but granted this river looks like it actually goes down and around that way. So it's actually quite a ways before it reaches the ocean. Probably not gonna go all the way there just cause I'm still tired from all that walking. But now that I'm on sand, it should be a lot easier to walk down. Man, what a gorgeous day. Perfect day to really go fishing anywhere. I felt like this was the move. I ended up being right to some degree. I'm just about guarantee there's right. Whoa, what in the heck was that? Something just jumped by that log. Whatever it was, it was big. Okay, just kidding. So what that was, that wasn't, oh my gosh. That scared the crap out of me. What that was, it was sand eroding off of that hill right there. It just made a huge sound. It sounded like a salmon jumped or something. But yeah, I'm about done. Gonna explore this a little further and then we'll uh, we'll close this video or go somewhere else or something. I don't know if you guys can see. There's another little tree frog right there. All right, we're back to the original spot after I've been bombarded with uh, cactuses. Probably not gonna be here very long. Try the first couple spots that I was at, and after that, it's probably gonna be a day. It was cool to get all that action right off the bat though, for sure. Once I lost my lucky lure, that might've been it. I can see it too, I just can't get it. Oh, there's one. I take that back. Fish number six is actually maybe close to the biggest one. So show him to the camera, or he'll just do that, that works. So it looks like there really is cutthroats in the lake if they're in this little creek that comes out of the lake. I'm sure they're a lot bigger in the lake. The only problem is up there, it's almost impossible to get down to because of the reeds. It's super marshy and muddy. All right, a few more casts right here and then I'll probably go up to the original spot and that'll be it. Pretty certain that was cut number six and cut number five on camera. Cut meaning cutthroat, for those of you who didn't know. But hey, like that's a lot more than I expected to be honest, cause I mean, just looking at this place, it looked fishy, it looked good, but it's not super big and not super deep. And the fish that I caught just kind of came out of nowhere. What I might try and do is walk back up this way. Might be a little wet, but it's gonna be a lot easier and quicker probably than going up and around. But I'm still gonna try and fish these little pockets that I didn't fish too much last time. Mostly fished right down there where that clearing is. But you know it's a good day of fishing, good March weather day when you're sweating pretty profusely too. I don't like sweating, but it means the weather's nice, so it's a bonus. Really the part that the only part that I missed was this narrow stretch and kind of the above part right where it first comes out of the lake. That part of the river or creek actually I should say is pretty hard to access. So I'm gonna grab my stuff. See if I can just walk back up this way. All right, we're up a bit farther. I fell like twisted a really weird way. I'm really surprised that I did not get hurt. Like crossed my legs over and kind of twisted the back of my leg, sort of. Oh my gosh. Well, it looks like this video is probably over if I lose this.
Thank you.